Hello, I'm Tom from Touch Football and this is part one of our one transfer for every Premier League club. Nice. And first up is Arsenal. Ryan, who do you have for Arsenal? Well, it's Bournemouth actually. Uh, oh, yeah, there's Bournemouth. Daniel Backman for me. I mean, he's a Sorry. young keeper. He's got quality. Uh, I think he's got Prem quality, not just Championship quality. And he, he wants to be playing in the Prem and he, I think he's a bit better than their current keeper. So, Tom, who have you got for Bournemouth? Well, he was on loan at Bour Bournemouth last season, Nat Phillips. And I think they should get them on permanent just to keep that defence structured. And it'll just hold him out throughout the season, I think. Who do you think, Jack? I've gone for Matt Ritchie from Newcastle. I think that it'll be a good um, option going up the flanks and should help in both their attacking and defensive areas. And for me, I've got Noah Okafor. He's a striker from RB Salzburg. And in recent history, they seem to be producing a lot of goal-scoring talent. So I think they're going to stick up with that trend and Okafor will be a good striking option for Bournemouth. Well, now it's Arsenal. Now it right. is Arsenal. I've gone for a player they've already been linked with, Tielemans. I think Leicester, he's running out of contract with them. He's likely to go to a better club like Arsenal. And I think that he's a great suit for them. I mean, they need to shore up them midfield. They've already got Jesus for the uh, attack. And uh, quite a good defence with uh, Gabriel and Ben White. So I think that really shores up the midfield for me. For me, Matthias Nunes. People may not know who he is, but I do. So, and he's got he's got some goals and assists. And you don't really want to be trusting Jaka the whole season when he's getting more calm season and season. And he's still young, so he's got room to improve, just like the Arsenal squad, really. I've got uh, Nabil Fekir, because I think that his partnership with Martin Odegaard would be really, really strong going forward and uh, be perfect in setting up Jesus to score goals. Yep, and for me, for Arsenal's transfer, I've gone for Mikel Marino. He's a fairly young Spanish centre mid from Real Sociedad, and I think he's definitely an upgrade on Shaka being more technical on the ball and a better passer, and I also believe he will still be able to keep up the defensive rates of Xhaka without getting the silly red cards. Now it's Aston Villa, and I've gone for somewhat of a controversial one, Ian Nacho. Now I've not gone for him to start, but I think... He would be a really good uh, substitute because when he's come off the bench, he's scored lots of goals. He's good for Leicester, but I think he's not really getting into their starting squad. I think if you want to take Ings off because he's getting old, he would be the perfect replacement for him. So for me, with Aston Villa, I've gone with Zeko Fofana. The main reason for this is last season they had um, Ramsey, who's a decent person to improve, but I just think he's going to be a good person just to actually improved the squad overall but because Ramsey's not up to it in the Villa side really so who have you gone with? Uh, I've gone with Leandro Spinazzola for Aston Villa because a lot of people probably say it's completely out of their realm but at the same time they did you know pull off signings like Coutinho as well um, and, and Martinez which of course are, are very strong players which lots of people wouldn't have believed they would have got their hands on but I think that Spinazzola would be the perfect player for them in their setup and going forward and Gerard, you know, how he worked at Rangers as well, but they're such huge players, full backs for him. Yeah, and for me, my Aston Villa signing, I think, should be Domenico Berardi. And I know some of you guys don't agree, but Aston Villa, their owners, they like to go big. They've already spent four hundred million since they've been back in the Premier League. And I think he's a great wing option, especially because Leon Bailey always gets injured and they definitely need more squad depth in that position and he's great on the ball. He can finish and he's got an assist in him too, so I think he's a good signing. Well, now it's Brentford and for me it's one matter to come in. I think he's leaving on a free. That'd be a really good uh, opportunity for Brentford to snap him up. I mean, Ericsson going the other way, I think they've got quite a similar play style and that will give them the ability to score more goals like they did when they brought in Ericsson in January last year. For me, I've also got a replacement for Ericsson, but I'll come with Thiago Alamada. He's got plenty of room to improve, but he's Argentina, and you know what Argentina are like at him. They're youngsters. Really? Who have you gone with? Uh, who's this? Uh, Brentford. 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 I've, got, I've got Danny Ward, the uh, Wales goalkeeper. I think that Raya probably isn't the strongest of keepers, um, and not really the Premier League quality mm. that Brentford want. I think Ward would, you know, he's not getting the game time at, at Leicester, really. At the minute, of course, if Schmeichel leaves, then that might change. But at the same time, I think that. Raya's successor, Ward, would be would be a mainstay in the Premier League and would definitely get the game time that he craves. Nice exciting one there, Joe. And for me, Brentford, I've gone for 
forgot who it was, Bradley Dack from Blackburn. He's been injured a lot, but when he's playing for them, he's a very, very good midfielder, and he's a creator, and we've seen that bringing in players from the Championship can sometimes be very good, cheap deals for Premier League clubs, and I think he would be one of those players, so I'd go for him. Well, now it is Brighton and Hove Albion. I've gone for quite an unknown player in the uh, English game. It's a player from RB Leipzig. His name is Sesco. Sesco? I can't pronounce it properly. I, you've got to bear with me. I'm sure we'll get his name up on screen. But, I mean, he's a striker and he does score quite a lot of goals. He's already got a goal this season only in two games. And, I mean, that's what Brighton and Hove Albion need to bring in. Because more pace not bringing in the goals in there. I mean, they have got Undav, but I think Sesco would be better. For me, I've went for a centre back, Levi Colwell. You may know him, and he was on loan at Huddersfield, did an amazing job part of getting him into the playoffs. And I think because of the. It could be part of the Cucuella deal with um, Chelsea, so I've gone with Levi Colwell. Who have you gone with? I think Brighton's problem, which has been for the last few years, especially with Potter set up, is the striking business still. So I've gone for Ivan Tony from Brentford. I think that it would probably be very, very hard for them to get hold of him, but at the same time, it really would work for Brighton because you've got not only a penalty specialist, but someone who can get into the box in the right place at the right time and, and score a lot of goals. And for me, for Brighton, I've gone for a position I think it doesn't necessarily need improving, but the players in that position are ageing. I've gone for a centre back, and he's a relatively unknown 22, 23 year old centre back from Colne, and that is Sebastian Bornell. He's a solid defender and he has the time to learn off Dunk and Webster and all the other centre-backs they've got and it should be a good signing in the years to come for Brighton. Well next up is my club Chelsea and I'll be the first to admit we need a striker and I think the perfect fit for us would be Immobile. He's quite a fast striker so that would fit with Sterling going down one wing with the wing backs also pushing in I think it would be really good for us. Has he done it in anywhere other than Italy, though, is the question. It's not that for me. It's just why would he go to Chelsea when he's, you know, I mean, proving himself at Lazio? Well, Chelsea is better than Lazio. Let's all, we can all admit that, can't we? Yeah, probably. Mm. Chelsea would Debatable. be better. So for it's me, debatable. Chelsea, whether they're centre-back, you should know him. It's best own name because you think about it, Rudiger's gone, Chris, and you need to get that like, defence up, really. And he's still young, so he's got plenty of time to improve. And be good alongside Koulibaly. To be honest, Chelsea's wing backs are shocking. I think that's why they're so interested in Cucurella at the minute. No, I mean, sorry. That, that's a joke. I mean, the likes of like Marcus Alonso, they're just not quality. Should be Jay Lane. Um, I'm going to go for Joachim Mailer because I know that his attacking um, availability going forward is very, very good as well as his defensive abilities. I think they'd uh, perfectly link up the two and supply it to the striker, whoever that may be next season. I'm sorry, but we've got Chilwell and James. Yeah, but they're injured, so that's his point. Not, not anymore, not this season. Yeah, but you, they've, got, they've right. got injury records, so you've got James to plan for that. I still don't think James's quality that Chelsea You've really got to need. plan for those injuries anyway. But for me, that's why Chelsea, I also, I also think that the striker position is needed, and I've gone for one that may not happen currently, but I think it should happen in the future, and that is Lorato Martinez from Inter Milan. He's fast, he's a good finisher, he may not have the physicality for the Prem, but that will come with time and experience in the league, and we've seen that you don't necessarily need that with the likes of Aguero before, another Argentinian striker, and I think he will be the one to break the Stamford Bridge striker curse. Well, next up is Crystal Palace. I've gone for Harry Wilson. I mean, yes, it's going to be a very hard task getting him off Fulham's books, but I mean, he's good. He can replace Gallagher. He's got goals. He's got the free kicks. Have you seen his free kicks? If not, watch them from last season because they are very, very good. I mean, I just think they just he takes over the camera from Gallagher and it just helps them all around. For me, for Palace, you don't want Kline a blooming right back, so I went for Jaden Bogle. He's still young. Fine, mate. Fine. Fine, but you don't win him, do you? So that's why I've got Jaden Bogle from Sheffield United, who's got plenty of room to improve, so that's why I've gone with him. Who have you went with? I've gone Conor Gallagher because I think that if they can get him, which I think is not out of their, their realm at all, because, I mean, he just works there, doesn't he? I've seen mm-hmm. it last season, so... Fair enough, and for me, Crystal Palace, I've gone for the Valencia striker. He's Uruguayan, I think he's about 24 now, so he's got quite a few years left in him for the Premier League. 
and that is Maximiliano Gomez. And as a striker, we've he is quite a physical striker, so that means he should fit in with the Premier League. And like before, we've seen other Uruguayan strikers in the Prem, like Suarez and Cavani, and they do brilliant. So I think Palace could capture themselves a real gem with that signing. Well, Everton, and I think personally, it's going to be Callum Wilson for me. With Richarlison going, you need someone to replace him. And I think he's quite similar in the way he plays. I mean, he's a fast player. He scores quite a lot of goals on his day. So I think it's going to be Callum Wilson. For me, I've gone with uh, attacking for also Ben Burden Diaz. You may know him from Blackburn, he's got plenty of goals, and I think he's ready to take the step up into the Prem. So I've gone with Domenico Berardi. Um, for many people, I think they doubt that he'd be able to get into the Everton team, but at the same time, they people are forgetting that they are a club which should be pushing really for Europe. I know that their results last season, their poor form, might put that idea off. But at the same time, you know, this is a club which signed James Rodriguez two years ago, so you know, I think that uh, Berardi really would fit into their system and and should drive them forward. Yep. Mm. Everton for me, obviously, as a Liverpool fan, I am enjoying their poor form. But <laughs> Everton, I've tipped them to sign Tolisso and it's a big name but we've seen that since their takeover quite a few years back they've always been able to bring big names to the club and like hence Rodriguez like he said and Tolisso he's not always played a buy and he's sort of in and out and he gets injured a bit so I think a move would freshen him up and where else but the Premier League. Well I don't, don't agree with that but moving on it's Fulham and I've gone for Max Cornet from Burnley I mean he can certainly score a goal in his day as a striker. And I think he would want to play Premier League football. And he thinks he can play Premier League football. I think, you know, he won't go to a top team. But a team like Fulham could suit him. And he could be key in there staying up if he does get signed. So for me, I've worked for a centre-back. You may know him. Malang Saar from Chelsea. He's got plenty of women to improve. Um, but it depends if Chelsea will let him go out if it'll be a loan or a transfer, so we're just going to have to wait and see. Yeah. So it's the likes of, of Cornet, like you were saying, I don't think that that's like a realistic signing for Fulham, mm. but at the same time, I would I would argue I've gone for Emmanuel Dennis, because I think that that's a signing which I can see definitely happening. Uh, I think he could form a great partnership with Mitrovic, and I mean, if, of course, he got injured, then Dennis, I think, would be the great substitute to fill in that void. And we've seen it with him at Watford, so I think it'd be a very reliable strike. Yeah, I think that's smart. The mix of com combination of pace and strength between yeah, the two exactly, of them. Yeah, exactly. Definitely, definitely very good. And I think he would probably want to leave Watford, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially now. They're if there's good. a Prem club, he would yeah. obviously leave. Okay, and then for me, my Fulham signing should be Leverkovic, the Croatian goalkeeper from Dynamo Zagreb. He's a good keeper. He's been performing in the Europa League and... You look at the Fulham squad, they've got a couple of players you think, yeah, they can do it in the league, but the one position you don't see anybody that can do it in the Premier League is goalkeeper. I think it'd be a good signing and maybe enough to keep them up in the end, but let's see what happens. 100% agree with that, to be honest, because I think the goalkeeper as well is another place that Fulham are lacking, you know, the likes of Rodak as well. Um, you know, they've been trying to replace him for years on the end. He's really not Premier League quality, so I think that'd be a great signing. Yeah, definitely have to agree, and I, I always get in bloody on FIFA. But Leeds United, I've gone for Tom Davies. You know, you might be thinking, what's he doing? But I, I think Calvin Phillips, he's gone. There's no other realistic centre uh, defensive midfielder than Tom Davies for me. Do you not think they could do better than Tom Davies? Though? He's not really that good. He's on the Everton bench. Leeds United, I, I just don't think they're big, of a name, big enough of a name anymore to really attract big players. But I think... Tom Davies, he could come in, he could uh, surprise everyone and get back to his top form. Sorry, could I just like interrupt that? You said you don't think they're big enough names to sign big players, but then again, they signed Rafinha and Rodrigo last season, which are, you know, they've just come up to the Premier League and they signed two Basically, massive names think, right we, there. We think you're wrong. We think yeah. you're wrong. I'm afraid on that one. So for me, I've been with a player from Portugal, Portugal striker, it's Evan Linson. You may not know him, but he's called Brazilian five... forward, isn't he? Yeah, he's a forward. Yeah. He scored quite a few goals, but you know when Bamford gets injured. I know Gohart, he's a good player, but you want somebody yeah. that's going to score a few more goals, so that's why I've gone with him. So I've gone Thiago Almada, again, because I think that they are competent of signing those big names, and Almada in the Argentinian League is 
kind of wasting his time. I know that it's, of course, um, his national league, but at the same time, I think that any opportunity to come to the Premier League, possibly yeah. the fastest paced league on the planet, he'll take, and uh, I think it'd fit into the league system very well. Yeah, I don't agree with Ronaldo. I like him. He's a very good young player, although I would have to point out he's not actually in Argentina anymore. He's in the MLS. Oh, is he not? Okay. Yeah, he's in the oh, MLS money now. Grab. Money and, grab. Yeah, so for Leeds, my signing is Mohamed Kamara. He's another player from the Salzburg team, and he's fast, strong, he's a good dribbler, he's a great CDM, and I think that would help replace Calvin Phillips brilliantly. Well, that's the end of part one. I mean, remember to like and subscribe, and always check back for part two. Yeah, remember, every little helps.